telling his story. He's telling a true story. It has more meaning. It has more uh, credibility. It has more uh, authenticity. It's authentic. You understand? <coughs> Right, and this is a definition that I particularly like, and this is from Fugaza, okay? The key to being a good nature guide is the ability to create a unique guided nature experience and promote conservation. It is about com combining one's individual talents, abilities, and personality with educating and entertaining guests and instilling in them an interest in all aspects of nature while ensuring that they have a richly rewarding experience. People who do well as nature guides are generally passionate about nature, enthusiastic, good community communicators and get on well with people. Remember I said to you in order to be a guide you have to have a passion for the natural environment, but at the same time, you cannot be afraid of people. Okay. Okay. Now we are looking at the attributes of a good tour guide or a nature guide. These are the characteristics. Okay. Um, the first one is to establish the correct expectations. What do we mean by that? Establish the correct expectations. Any ideas? Yes. Uh, you know what, what uh, your customers or guests as uh, what, what do they expect of you or from what they expect? What do they expect from the tour, okay? Say, for instance, you have a group of guests or tour tourists that are interested in bird watching. You understand? Mm -hmm. They are interested in identifying birds, okay? They are keen bird watchers. So in your tour, are you going to be talking about the geology of the area? No. You're going to hone in on birds, am I right? So you are establishing the correct expectations from the onset, from the beginning. Right, punctuality. Why is punctuality important? As you as a guide, why do you need to be punctual? <laughs> why do you need to be punctual? Yes. I think that's because it shows that it shows professionalism in the world. Okay. And it also shows that um, you, you are actually kind of serious or you're taking, a, you're taking your, your customers serious or you're taking your job very serious. Okay, that's good. He says that being punctual means that you are being professional. Any other contributions? Okay, these are paying clients, am I right? Yes. Time is money. If the tour is supposed to start at 9 o'clock, can you arrive there at 10 o'clock? No. <laughs> How would the tour, uh, tourists receive you? They'd be very upset, isn't that so? They have paid for your services. Yes. And it's very unprofessional for you to arrive late. So punctuality, <coughs> is very important because they have paid for your services. You are actually robbing them if you arrive at the tour late. In fact, you need to be an hour there before the tour starts, not an hour later. Right, always face your clients when you are talking to them. Why? Always face your clients when you are talking to them. How would you feel if I had my back to you the whole time and I was talking to this boy? Hmm? 
Yeah, we'll lose concentration. <coughs> Isn't that good? Yes. yes. So you need to face your clients when you are talking to them uh, in order to establish eye contact, maintain eye contact. You understand? Uh, also, you need to take cognizance of the sun. Why? When you're out in the natural environment, and you are talking perhaps about a particular tree species. Why do you need to take cognizance of the sun? If the sun is behind me, and I am the guy, and the sun is behind me, and you are my audience, would you be able to look at me? No. What would the sun do to your eyes? <laughs> right, if the sun is behind me and you are looking at me, I'm the guide. The, the sun is actually going to blind you. Yes. Right, so you need to take cognizance of the sun when you are addressing your slides. Make eye contact. That's how you draw the client in. You maintain uh, the relationship for that period of time, the attention, you understand. You make eye contact. Now you notice when I talk to you, I'm making eye contact. I'm not looking at the roof, I'm not looking at the floor. I'm looking at you. Am I right? Um, be considerate. Be considerate. Okay, remember we spoke about the different tours for the different age groups. Now, if you've got a group of uh, tours that are over 60 years, close to 70 years old, are they going to be able to keep up with your pace? No. So you need to be considered you're going to walk at a appropriate pace. Okay? And then, of course, if it is a hot day, are you going to actually address them under the sun or will you take them to a shaded area? Shaded area. Okay, so be considerate. Avoid one-on-one -on -one, on -one discussions. Okay, one-on-one -on -one discussions. If you have one-on-one -on -one discussions in the group, how does the rest of the group feel? They will let it out, am I right? And they will eventually lose interest. Um, always address all clients. In other words, don't just maintain eye contact with one particular person in the group because you feel comfortable with that particular person. But rather maintain contact with all the members of the group. Everybody needs to feel special. Um, speak clearly. Okay, don't speak too fast. Don't speak too slow. Okay, um, speak clearly. Also, you need to bear in mind um, that chances are that your clients do not speak English as their first language. So you cannot use big bombastic words. You need to keep the sentences short and you need to keep the language simple. You understand? You need to talk to them in a way that the information is easily conveyed. Okay? And then you need to have a sense of humor. You need to throw in a joke here or a, and a joke there. You can't be all stiff and starchy. Am I right? Because then you're going to become a war. So, you need to throw in a joke here, throw in a joke there, just to make the conversation interesting. Is everybody clear with us? Yes. Right. The guide also needs very, very strong communication skills. Remember, communication is the heart of interpretation. The tour guide can either make 
or break the experience for the tourists, the clients. If you're a poor communicator, it's going to impact on the overall experience of uh, the guy, uh, of the of the tour. You understand? So you need to have very strong communication skills. You need to be friendly but not familiar. I like that. You need to be friendly but not familiar. What do I mean by that? You need to be friendly but not familiar. <coughs> yes. If it means you must be friendly but professional. Exactly. Okay, you need to be friendly, you need to be professional, okay, but not familiar. Meaning if um, you'll stop um, at a, a, a race point and uh, say for instance uh, the clients take out a bottle of wine are you going to partake of that no no it's not professional maybe okay so you need to be friendly you need to be approachable but remember you need to draw the line you still need to keep it professional you understand. Yes. Right. You also need to be outgoing and you need to be a person, people's person. A lot of students told me yesterday that they are shy, they are introverted. Now this type of profession, it requires a passion for the natural environment, but at the same time passion for people. You understand? So you need to be extroverted, you've got to love people, um, and, 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 and you must be outgoing. You understand? You need to be energetic, you need to be vibrant, um, you need to be one of those approachable type people. And then obviously you also need to be a good listener. Why? Why do you need to be a good listener? You know exactly at what points you are going to stop and talk about this particular tree, that particular rock, this particular animal. Right. But at the same time, you also need to listen to what the client wants. You understand? You can't go there uh, just, uh, just spelling out all the information because you've prepared on that. You need to listen to what the client wants and you need to hold in on that. You understand? You need to be a good listener. And because you have all the information, you need to remain humble. You cannot be arrogant. You understand? Um, and of course, you need to have a passion for what you are doing. So is everyone clear about the attributes? Yes. Right. We are looking at some of the communication techniques. And um, the, the, the communication techniques that you would apply when you are on uh, a guiding tour, right? The first one would be don't name things tell them about it okay example it is more interesting to hear that the sweet thorn is used for making coffee by burning the ground seeds than hearing that it's called acacia kalu. you understand so you're not uh, you don't just name things you are telling them about it and that creates deeper understanding um, 
Um, so my question is, what's the point of explaining something they don't know? Explaining um, something? Um, like you said, it's, 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 don't, it's, don't tell them about it. Don't name things, tell them about it. If you don't name it, how else will they know what it is? No. Some people will stop at a particular tree and they'll say, this is acacia karu, and they'll move on. You understand? So you will stop and you will say, this is the acacia karu. And then you will provide the explanation around coffee. You understand? Now, that acacia karu is just not an acacia karu. It has more meaning. You understand? And I think it will be better absorbed. Am I right? If you create meaning around it. Who disagrees? No, you don't. You're <laughs> right. Relate personal incidents. Tourists love hearing stories of what happened in real life. Entertain them with interesting incidents that you had in your career as a field guide. Okay? Remember, don't keep it stiff and starchy. Be flexible. Bring in a little bit of sense of humor. Uh, bring in a little bit of a story from your past. For example, when I was doing my Fagasa assessment out in Fuzi, and during my assessment, we were attacked by a, a, a bachelor herd of elephants. And you found that the elephant that was walking towards our vehicle was, not, was just a couple of meters away. And why was he drawn to our vehicle? Because my colleague had oranges in her bag. So the sense of smell the animal was drawn to our vehicle. So I'm relating a personal incident. It adds color to the story. Am I right? Yes. Right. Engage with your clients by asking questions. Participate in activities and get close to the subject matter. Okay. Pick up a log. Provided that there are no scorpions, get them to touch it. Get them to uh, smell it. You understand? Get them to participate. You're drawing in your clients. And obviously, at the end of the day, you are creating a better, memorable experience. Um, let tourists use their senses, which is sight, smell, feel, taste, and listen. Create a multi-sensory experience. Okay? So, you're not just stopping and pointing things out, you are getting them to use their senses. So you are creating a richer experience for, for your clients. And encourage your clients to ask questions. Because that's how you get them to participate. Okay, so these are some of the techniques that can be employed to uh, create a better guided tour. Okay, that brings us to the end. Do you all have any questions? Are you all comfortable with the material? Yes. Is there anybody here that does not understand anything? Am I talking over your head? You are okay now? Yes. Okay, good. So can you see now how interpretation two is different from interpretation one? Yes. Okay. So uh, we're going to dig deeper next week when I see you where we're going to be looking at other aspects of interpretation, like such as, remember the story that you told? How do you create a story using a theme? Okay? Okay, thank you very much.